It was unjust, but I was fired. Now, I started a consulting firm after that. Everybody thought I was a pusher. But the honest truth is, I didn't know what I was doing and I was too young to even care. So I just did what I enjoyed doing and thankfully it all worked out very well. So I'm not sure if that was really pushing. But here's one time, ladies and gentlemen, here's one time I was a pusher. You see, I had this horrible contract with a government agency. And the director said, you will become an employee or you're getting out of here. This is one time I pushed. I pushed right back at him and said, I don't wanna be your employee. I pushed back at him and said, you don't even pay me enough. I pushed back at him and instead of getting fired this time, I fired my boss. This is an example of when I was a pusher. Now, when I think about it, you know, now that we're back in 2050, am I a pusher or am I not? You know what? I think I am very much like all of you. There are times when I truly am a pusher and there are times, honestly, I'm a pushover. Now, based on what I shared with you, put a one in the chat. If you've concluded my character as being a pusher, put a two in chat when you, if you think I'm a pushover. I love to see your opinion. Thank you guys so much. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Mrs. Toastmaster, but that's okay. I would like everyone to put a comment in the chat to Angela. Is she a pusher or is she not a push, pusher? What did she do really well in her speech? And maybe she's still at 2050 right now and we have to bring her back so she can read this. But I know she would like, love to hear about all the different uh, ideas we had about her speech. Our next speaker is Mary Ruth Dilling. She's another Texas person here at Oddline Presenters. She has been a Toastmaster for 14 years. I asked her where she would travel to, and she said the late 1800s. I said, why would you like to go there? And she said she loved the time because it was simpler and people cared about each other. They had communities, that helped each other. She is a natural health professional who educates, challenges, and encourages people who are sick and tired of being sick and tired and need to make lifestyle changes to improve their mental and physical health. She is working on her Pathways Innovative Planning Level 1 Evaluation and Feedback. And her speech title is Natural Health Professor, Mary Ruth all. Dilling. Is that the title? What's the title, Mary Ruth? Where It All Begins. Where It All Begins, Mary Ruth Dilling. Where It All Begins. Probably heard the saying, it all begins in the gut. Did you know that at least 50% of the population has at least one chronic health condition? Over 75% of our healthcare costs 
go to the treatment of these very conditions. Over 95% of chronic health conditions are due to lifestyle choices. Think about that for a minute. Hippocrates said, all disease begins in the gut. I want to tell you about leaky gut. If you have if you have seen this excuse me but can you see me okay <laughs> i've disappeared from my view and i just okay the term leaky gut is trending now. It's very, very popular. Most people though do not know what it means. Leaky gut actually means hyperpermeability. Now our gut is one cell wall thick and it fits like this. The cells are like this. Now, they are supposed to be permeable. So when your food goes through your digestive system, it's supposed to be broken down into the smallest minute particles. And then it's supposed to fit through those tight junctions into your bloodstream. But what happens instead is that it becomes hyperpermeable. Things that we eat or chemicals that we're exposed to create a gap in the cells. They shrink. Therefore, the food, instead of getting broken down into the smallest, smallest piece, now is in larger chunks and it slips through those junctions and gets into the bloodstream. And instead of being recognized as food, it is recognized as infection, in, an intruder, so to speak. So some of the signs of leaky gut include Some of the causes of leaky gut is prescriptions, medications, vaccinations, stress, or trauma, grains, nightshades like potatoes, tomatoes, sugar, artificial chemicals, insomnia. Some of the symptoms of leaky, leaky gut, any type of health or gut issues such as bloating, diarrhea, constipation, nausea, indigestion, ulcers. Symptoms could be headaches, migraines, fatigue. food allergies, chemical sensitivities, mental health issues. To heal a leaky gut, you need to remove the source of leakiness, such as de-stress, stop of eating things with chemicals or sugar, stop 
try to limit the amount of chemical exposure. And then you detox. Eating a whole food plant-based diet gives healthy probiotics to your gut. And then you supplement with probiotics such as kombucha or sauerkraut or like a probiotic from a company. It all starts in the gut. If you are experiencing any type of chronic health condition, you have a leaky gut. Mental health issues, physical health issues, it is all connected. It all begins in the gut. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Mary Ruth. If everyone could put a few comments into the chat for Mary Ruth, what you liked and what she, what you thought of her slides and what her, you thought of your, her presentation. We're about to move into our impromptu session of the evening. But before we do, I'd like to ask you, if your time machine landed in the wrong part of the world at the wrong part of the, at the wrong part of history, maybe you landed into a world war or maybe just a regional war, what would you do? Would you get back in your time machine as fast as you could and go home? Would you go to the front lines and try to help as many people as you could? Or would you tell the people at the, in the war how it was going to end so they would just go home and stop fighting? Put it in the chat. We'd like to know what you would do. As we go to our impromptu session section of this evening, I'd like to introduce Mary Ann Grady. I asked her about time travel, where she would go, and she would go to the 50s and 60s to meet young Lucille Ball. Lucille was an actress, a comedian, a model, a studio executive, and producer. She was a woman ahead of her time, and she, Mary Ann would love to hear the musings of how she got to be who she was because Marianne loves Lucy. Take it away, Marianne. Well, thank you kindly, Miss Pamela. As Pamela mentioned, I am your Table Topics Master for tonight. And this is where we practice impromptu speaking. Did you ever get in that situation where you said, oh, I wish I said this? Well, this is where we practice talking off the top of our head, speaking on our toes. So I'm gonna ask some questions and you'll have one to two minutes to respond. And my questions will be related to our topic for tonight. So first up, I'm gonna call on some of our guests because I know they have experience. So David Tanner, please unmute yourself. David, you go back in time to your birth you're about to relive your entire life again with all of your future memories. You, you even remember how to talk, walk, et cetera. What are you going to do differently? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Well, there, with all that information, there's a lot of small things I might want to change there. I might date different girls in high school and college. Um, I might, uh, you know, try and buy some stocks that were going to go up later on. But if any of that information changed where I am right now, I really wouldn't want to do it because I like the way my life turned out. If not perfect, but I enjoyed it. And part of the things that I liked about it was the mystery of not knowing what was around the corner. So I probably wouldn't really want to change that much. There are some experiences I would like to relive, but there's some I really don't want to do again. Once was plenty. So I would rather not have that information and just continue to go on and see what's around the corner. Thank you. 
Well, thank you, sir. I'm going to call on Laura DeAnda. Laura, can you unmute yourself? Laura, a time traveler version of you that has 55 more years than you visits you. And you can only ask them one question. What would it be? A, a time traveling me comes to visit me. I would ask the question, <laughs> this is maybe stereotypical, but how do we solve health crises and, and war? How do we get peace, eliminate hate, and spread love on a worldwide basis? I would love to know the answer to that. And I would love to get that knowledge and implant it in the present. Uh, you know, time travel is such a fabulous topic. And I know that things can change in the future. But I know, I know that deep down, we all have these little nuggets, these just little nuggets of of peace and, and love and joy that we can easily spread to, to others. So that's what I would want to know. How, would, how could we spread that worldwide to every single individual? Madam Topics Master. Thank you, Laura. I'm going to call upon someone we haven't heard from in a while, even though she has a role. Elizanne Warren Russell. Now, a lot of us have heard through time travel from, you know, Back to the Future, Marty McFly got in his plutonium powered DeLorean and had a bunch of escapades. But, you know, what would you do? Where would you travel? So I'm asking you, would you go to the past or the future? In what year and why? What would it be like? Paint me a picture, Elizanne. Paint you a picture of where I would like to go in the future. For me, I think the future is so exciting as it is all about the unknown. Would I be a grandmother then? Would I be exploring the world? Hmm. What would I like to be or do in the next 10, 15, or even 20 years from now? Would I be on a cruise ship, just sailing the ocean, climbing the Eiffel Tower? Or let's say knocking down some of those walls that are unimaginable. For me, the future is so wide and so great that I can do and be anything. I feel like a kid again, looking at the world and seeing where it will take me. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Well, thank you, Elizan. Does anyone recognize my background? It was like a show in the 60s, the time tunnel. But I saw it and I was like, ooh, a blast from the past. Uh, let's see. I would like to call upon our guest, Andrea. Andrea, I'm a time traveler from 200 years in the future. If I said this to you, what would you say to me or ask me to prove it? Could you repeat that? I'm a time traveler 200 years from now. What would I say to myself? In the future. And if I said this to you, what would you ask me to prove it? Madam Table Topics Master, 200 years in the future. I'd want to know whether people still have sex. Or are, are, are things done mechanically? Are people able to, were people able to hug again? What happened after COVID? When were people able to hug and kiss and say, I love you? Wish their parents happy birthday. I'd want to know exactly when humanity would return to being normal. I'd want to know whether we ever achieved Racial harmony. I'd want to know whether we were able to create 
an environment of peace. I'd want to know whether our values would have changed or would be still so materialistic and superficial as a human race. And most of all, I'd want to know whether we took global warming seriously and whether we were able to save our planet for future generations. Madam Table Topics Master. Wonderful, Andrea. Thank you for that table topic. And now let's see. Mm -hmm. Calvin, could you unmute yourself? You traveled into the future 200 years, but you were naked. How would you prove who you were to the people on the other side? That's an interesting proposition, Madam Topics Master. You know, I was just thinking, proud of coming up here, how wonderful it is to attend an online presenter's Toastmasters meeting. It's always so exhilarating most definitely exciting and it keeps me balanced. In fact, it's the perfect elixir. And what do I mean by that? This elixir is something that I just have to have. Online presenters, I gotta have you. I gotta have the camaraderie. I gotta have the Andreas who make me think and feel great. In fact, Andrea made me feel pretty smart as she was talking because I said, you know what? She sounds great. And those are exactly the concerns that I have. Such a wonderful feeling that I am experiencing right now as a result of my attendance at this wonderful meeting. Madam Topics Master, that was a marvelous, marvelous proposition. Well, thank you, Calvin. Wonderful job tonight. Um, are we ready to move on, Pamela? We're ready. Okay, then I will hand the virtual lectern back to you. Thank you, Ken. We, if you would look at, Graham has put all the timing reports in there, and then if you could cast your vote for the best speaker. I did not call for that and the best table topics person to our vote counter. And our vote counter is, there she is, she's waving, see that right there? And her name starts with vote counter. That's not her name, that's her role. Al Alizan is our vote counter, their smiling face there. And it says that we have VP of membership leading. Is that is that true, Marianne, do we have a, person? Do we have a person that we're bringing in today? Vice President member leads as part of the meeting? Okay. No, we don't have uh, a speech tonight. We have it. Uh, we have next week. Okay. One of my favorite time periods in history would be going back to Regency. Now that's just after the American Revolution. And it is, it is early it's the early days of the American, of the world of America, of American history. But I would not be in America, I would be in England because my favorite author is Jane Austen. I like everything she writes. I would really like to be her friend. Now, I know it wasn't a great time in history to be a woman. In fact, she had to change her name so that people wouldn't know who she, that she was a woman writing. But there's something so fascinating about how she was able to stand out as a strong, as a strong voice in a time where it really wasn't welcome. I really admire that part. Now we are going to our evaluation portion of the meeting and leading that evaluation portion of the meeting is Jim Barber. Jim has been a Toastmaster for 32 years, but he said, who's counting? And I asked Jim where he would go if he was to travel back in time. Now he couldn't give me one answer, he gave me two. So it's a coin toss, one or the other. Either he would go back in time to talk to young Jim and give him tips 
So he would go back 50 years to Raleigh, North Carolina, and give him a real good talk, himself a real good talking to about what the future holds, or else he would go and talk to Albert Einstein in the 1950s and have a nice chat with him. So either young Jim or Albert Einstein. Jim, take it away. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Our evaluation portion of the evening is our opportunity to give our speakers feedback on what they did. Our first speaker, if you were listening, was Rick Derling. And evaluating Rick's presentation, we have, we are privileged tonight to have Deborah Carr. Deborah, take it away. Rick, it was really wonderful to listen to your speech tonight and to have a chance to evaluate you. What I noticed is how everyone really enjoyed and paid attention to your, your talk. And with your one main goal of to share the impact of your style on others, you certainly pulled it off. Your comfort level in front of the camera is, was right on. Your body language, you're leaning in and smiling when you made a couple quotes or um, said a few things. In your hands and using both of them at times with the phone and, and just gestures were very, very good. I liked your transparency, most of all. And in saying how with your own self-discovery, how your own listening skills, how they played such a, a tremendous role in, in creating change in your, both your personal and your professional life. Uh, what I also... Um, uh, notices how you mentioned about your colleagues, how they wanted to sometimes just vent. You realize that sometimes they needed advice and sometimes they needed to just share ideas and talk through them. The other thing with your personal experience, you mentioned about how to ask open-ended questions. You gave examples of that and which is stellar, just stellar because that can keep people from monopolizing, hopefully conversations when and when there's a group. Everyone loves to be heard, but sometimes they can monopolize regardless. Um, I also, here's another M, enjoyed how you challenged at the end. You gave the challenge about people, you know, paying attention to their own listening skills. But there are areas to improve, although minor, because you, you've done very, very well throughout the years at, you know, here in Toastmasters. What I felt, for myself is that some of your body language, even though you're using it, it's stiff. It didn't seem as relaxed. So a couple things is to kind of shake it up and shake your head and whatever before you start on camera. It's the same as if you went to go out on platform, you would need to do that behind the scene a little bit and just kind of wiggle and, and stuff. So maybe you can just turn off your, cam your camera for a minute here on Zoom, shake it up and come back on. Plus, it also increases the energy to make you smile more. The other thing was about voice inflection. Your voice is very, very good. Your enunciation is excellent. But sometimes just add a little bit more oomph into some of the, the areas. It's easy to get monotone. It wasn't even monotone, but to just add a little bit more inflection, I think it can have a lot more impact on um, when people are listening to you, the, it, because everyone, everyone, regardless who it is, gets a little bit quiet and they start to, you know, die off. And by adding that voice inflection, it wakes people up. I'm on a red light, but all of a sudden, what I am going to say is I really enjoyed your talk. I will fill out everything on the evaluation form. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Great tips. Appreciate that. Our second presentation that was by Angela Heath. And we have, we are privileged again to have evaluating Angela's presentation. And Carolina, please forgive me, but I'm going to keep trying until I get it right. We have Carolina Ramirez. I got close. Okay. Carolina Ramirez will be evaluating Angela's presentation. Take it away, Carolina. Thank you very much, Jim. Your presentation is great. Ramirez. 
The main objective of Angela's speech was to introduce herself to the club. And she excelled at many things. The first, vocal variety. Second, she caught our attention with her initial question about to be a, push, a pusher. And the structure of her speech was very good because uh, in the intro, she explained to ourselves what is to be a pusher. And the, the body and the conclusion uh, was very clear as well. And the body language, because she presented her speech standing up, she had more space to use the head, the hands, everything. And maybe, Angela, you may want to work on a couple of things. The eye contact with the camera. At the beginning, you, I noticed that you were watching at your screen maybe watching your audience or maybe you you were using notes i'm not sure but at the end of your speech you came back to us and that was great and maybe at the end of your speech you could uh, give more more emphasis or more power to the final message maybe to make a, make us think about how is how important is to be a pusher for for ourselves or think about our personal stories or the benefits and something to challenge yourself because your energy is is very powerful because you are always smiling and only to challenge yourself maybe you could use humor in your speeches because you have a great energy Congratulations, because you achieved your objective, you introduced your, your, yourself with a very entertaining speech. Jim, back to you. Thank you very much, Carolina. A solid evaluation. Our third presenter tonight was an unplanned presentation, but we appreciate her stepping up to the lectern, the virtual lectern to do this. Our third presentation was by Mary Ruth Dilling, and we are lucky to have evaluating Mary Ruth's presentation, uh, evaluator Andy Byrne. Andy, take it away. Thank you very much, Jim. It's my pleasure to be able to evaluate Mary Ruth. She was working on her innovative planning level one, the first speech in the two speech component of evaluation and feedback. The most important thing that I can share with you about this, Marianne, is that it is hard sometimes to give speeches on complex issues where the audience really needs to have some knowledge about what you're talking about. And that, happens often where people go to speak to a group and they don't first understand what the group's level of understanding and experience is and therefore they can be speaking above the head of the audience and leave people in confusion. You did a great job because you're an educator in presenting your points. Where it all begins, right at the title, you start raising questions that make me think about your topic and how things will be going along and how you're gonna put things together. Then you go into the complex topic of leaky gut and you support your points with pictures. Now here's, I'm gonna jump around a little bit between observation and comment. And this is what I saw, what I heard and what I felt. First off, People learn different ways, and the an acronym for that is VAC, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic or touching, and people learn and remember in different ways. Your presentation was helping to present complex ideas to a group of people that may not know anything about medicine visually through your slides, and you did a good job on the slides. Particularly what I liked was you were using builds, and for people unfamiliar with that term, it means that as you're going from one item to the next, you brought it up as a new slide. Some people supplement that by changing the color of something you just said to the color you're speaking to now. So builds can be very effective in keeping you on target for your structure. And you did a, a decent job with that. 
The other thing that you did a good job on was your pacing, your clarity of words, vocal dynamic range, conversational style so that everyone was comfortable with what you were saying. You looked right at the audience and people were able to see your facial expressions. They were able to understand what you were doing. Therefore, what I'd like to say is I enjoyed it. I learned a lot from it. And I look forward to the second time that you're going to do this because in level one, you do your speech twice. Thank you very much, Marianne. Look forward to it. Thank you, Andy. Well done. Appreciate that. And that concludes our evaluations. I saw in the chat, thank you very much, Graham, that all three of our evaluators spoke within time. So if you would please cast your votes for your personal favorite of our three evaluators, that was Deb, Carolina, or Andy, to our vote counter, Elizan. If you would do that, we will call on the, I will call on the different functionaries to see how we did in general this evening. Starting with, and I would please remind each of our supporting people to uh, limit your observations to one minute, please, so that we can stay on time. Our grammarian this evening was Marty. Marty, how did we do grammarian wise? Well, I think we did extraordinarily well. Uh, the one thing that I noticed was that if I'm right about what the word of the day was, nobody used it. What I think I heard the word of the day was, it's trick. And I didn't hear it used even once. However, we did have some excellent word usage. And by my favorite for that was the way Angela used the word pusher. I've never heard Pusher used in that sense as a character trait, and I like it, I like it. Otherwise, we did very well in terms of things being interesting, and that's the end as far as I'm concerned. Back to you. That's great, thank you, Marty. And you're absolutely right, nobody mentioned the word that I heard, so I will take care of that right now. It's a little late for your report, but Trek, there we go. I've said it. And now our watcher this evening was Carl. What did you watch, Carl? Well, the main thing that I saw was a lot of people are too low in their frames. They're, we're, we're getting a little bit of the Kilroy effect here. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm going to call out uh, Graham, Carolina, Rui, Marty, Marty, if you can change the location of your camera, it'll fix that and we won't be so so interested by the fan above your head, which uh, uh, always draws our eyes. Calvin, you're a bit low on, on the screen as well. Marianne, you're an, a special case. And I bet you've heard that before. You're a special case because look at what she did. She looks like she's actually part of the control room for the time tunnel. Nice. That, so she broke the rule, but it works. And the rule is your eyes should be above mid screen. Okay, okay. get your eyes above mid, mid screen. That's a, that's a good way to tell. Tasha, what a great use of phone um, on uh, Zoom. I, I, it works uh, beautifully and I almost never see that. So well done. Kudos to, to you for that. Laura, get a better picture for when you're not there. Uh, you, you have sparkly eyes, you're, 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 you're very animated. Get a picture that's you. The picture you have there is not you. And just be careful, everybody. I saw a lot of looking down and you know doing something else. Uh, you're on camera. Remember, we're, we are all watching you. Now, back to you. Good point, Carl. Thank you very much. Our awe counter this evening was Jeanette. Jeanette, the Wizard of Oz. How did we do? Yes. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Yes, I'm the Wizard of Oz today. And I can say that we had a wonderful evening. But I noticed a few things and um, just, just a few things, nothing big. But uh, what I would like to say is uh, to be more careful or conscious of, you know, the ahs, the ums. There were also a few hesitations. 
tonight and repeated words and a few errors also. So um, that's my report for tonight and back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Nicely done, Jeanette. Thank you very much. Our chat monitor this evening was, oh shoot, I wrote it down. I can't Dr. read my own writing. Who's our it's chat monitor? It's Dr. Me. Tasha, that's right, of course. <laughs> Dr. Tasha, how did we do in the chat? We were pretty active in the chat. I am new to, I don't know if this is something that we just started doing where we're giving feedback to our speakers in the chat, but we gave some really good feedback there. We also started with, I saw a term that was pretty interesting. Graham used Boastmaster. If he could kind of explain that, that would be that would be great. It, I, I wrote the term down and thought it was a good term to use. I had my own ideas on it. The other thing I noticed is we were talking about the past, future, present. And I like the comments that I saw about the past. Someone said that they would want to see their parents as a child, but that was pretty interesting. I'd like to see that too, to see how my parents met. Someone else mentioned that they had a friend pass away, which is pretty sad, but they would they would love to go back and just say, I love you. Um, I can definitely relate to that. And then someone else said they would like to buy some Amazon stock the day that Amazon went public. <laughs> I think we all would want to do that. <laughs> Overall, it was a pretty active chat. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Dr. Tasha. Appreciate that. You're and welcome. now it's my turn to evaluate the meeting as a whole. Frankly, I am always in awe of online presenters meetings. I would recommend them to anybody that wanted to know how do you conduct a Toastmasters meeting right? I would say without a doubt, always come to online presenters and they're going to show you how it's done. However, there is always room for improvement. The room for improvement tonight is rather obvious. We need to have a host. It's very difficult to hold a proper meeting without a host and we just we got caught with our pants down, so to speak, in doing that. Uh, the this is not directed at anybody here. This is more of an officer thing. But we need to have some way of making sure that basically anybody can like like a fire alarm emergency thing, break glass in emergency. We need to have some way of people finding out how to get in as hosts if they need to. If we run into a situation like we did tonight. That's all. In that regard, though, I special kudos to everybody for rolling with the punches and not letting that stop it. We were going to have a terrific meeting anyway. A special kudo to, I suspect it was Andy who got hosting privileges. Thank you, Andy, it was, who got hosting privileges and started recording. That was great. Appreciate that, doing that. Also, kudos to, especially, as I say, to Pamela Benjamin, who as Toastmaster of the evening, did not let that throw her that we were did not have a host. She just plowed right on ahead. And Mary Ruth Dilling, she was prepared to give her presentation, even though she thought that she wasn't going to have uh, screen sharing capabilities. So special kudos to both of them for being flexible. This is a great club, and I look forward to another terrific meeting next week. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. And Madam Toastmaster, I may have caught you off guard. Do you want me to call for the votes or do you well, want to do it? I will close. Um, I will close. Do it. One of my favorite movies is Groundhog's Day. And Bill Murray is caught on a certain day on Groundhog's Day and he lives it over and over and over and over again. And with this, the theme of this meeting, I have thought about that day over and over again. What day would I do over and over again? And I can't, I, I'm not sure, I, it took me a while, probably the day I dropped my son off at college, I would probably like to live that over and over again, just so that I would be able to just hold on to those memories of the last time he was I guess a little boy and then he went out into the big world so i would love to hear your thoughts on what day you would love to learn live over and over again whether to learn how to be better whether to remember it 
or just because you liked that day. It was really fun. I picked a topic that I don't usually approach, but I thought it would really be fun for table topics and we would get some really great questions. My favorite question was that Jim is gonna talk to his young self or Albert Einstein and it was a toss up. I thought that was really, really a great comment. Now I'd la like to hand over control of the meeting to our presiding officer, Andrew Byrne. Thank you very much, Pam. And it is now uh, 8.51, so we have a few minutes. And, and Andy, I, I neglected to ask for the votes. Do you want to announce the winners? Nope. I don't have that, so if you can have the winners announced, I appreciate that. My pleasure. Well, I'll let our vote counter do it. Elizan, let's hear from you. Announce well, the votes. What an amazing meeting. I've put the vote in the chat. And for our speaker, we have Miss Angela Heat, who won the vote of her peers. We have Laura Dandra, who won for the table topics, and Andrew Burns for the evaluator. Thank you, Miss Ev General Evaluator. And Andy, I'll let you take it from here on. Okay. This club is noted by having lots of talent and depth. And it was shown by the fact that uh, when we have challenges and things that we don't expect, we can still navigate the road and come away with a great meeting. And part of that process is everybody goes to the website and fills out the roles for next week. We have some people already have done that, but I'm gonna go with one eye on one computer one eye on the other computer. But the first one is for the roles for next week, our Toastmaster of the day, we have Marianne Grady had signed up for that role. And this is the week, let me make sure I have the right day on here. Should be August 23rd. And that is the correct day. All right, so Marianne, uh, you are the Toastmaster of the day. We need a timer, we have a timer. Don't everybody jump up at once. If you don't know the role, I'm sure people in the club can mentor you on how to do that. Ah, Pam is going to be our timer. Excellent. Our next role that's open is the, our, uh, Pam is also the ah counter she signed up for. So perhaps somebody else could be timer. Okay, we have Angela will be the timer. It's really important to take this that you have the schedule for the following week that you're talking about up because who knows what signed up for which roles. All right, grammarian. Next grammarian is, do I see a hand? Marty, did you want to be grammarian? Well, I tell you, I'll be on a cruise ship, so I will be, I won't even be able to attend the meeting. I saw Kim's yes, hands up. You, you, you're you going to attend the meeting from a cruise ship? Oh, I've done it. Ken, Ken's well, hand was up. Now, honestly. So Ken's I'm hand going is to try up. to attend, but I hate to uh, put put the club in possession of depending on my ability to do it. Okay. The watcher is listed next week as Richard Darling. Thank you for signing up. The chat monitor for next week is open. And who wants to do that role? And Tasha, okay. Tasha, thank you very much for stepping forward and taking control. And we now have the voter roll is open. Who will take care of our votes? Anybody want to do that? We'll move on to the next one. We have Antoinette Trim as one of our speakers for next week. And we have speaker position two is open. I just Name took it then. What, Marty? What, Graham? I, I just it? said, I just took it then. Okay. So Graham just took that. And we have room for third speaker and a backup. Third speaker is who? Do I see a hand, a foot, a tongue? Anybody want to be the third speaker? I I can be the third speaker. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Now, I appreciate everyone's dedication because the international meeting begins on the 23rd. So I don't have the schedule in front of me, but the good thing is that they've set up a lot of the meeting with uh, what's known as VOD, video on demand, which is like time shifting uh, to allow you to see it later. Uh, do we have a backup speaker in case somebody has a life event? Backup speaker, and then you'll move forward into a speaker position. Any of our guests, if you will get together with our vice president of membership. Andy, um, I think we're good on the uh, speakers because we have a prospective member speech next week. Okay, so. And we, we're also having an induction ceremony. Prospective speaker and induction. Okay. Do we ha have we cut out uh, table topics? We're going to have fewer table topics for those additional things. Is anyone for a table topic, Master? Probably only two or three, maximum. Andy? Yes? Hi, it's Nick. Uh, is it possible to hear from one or two of the guests, please? I'm sorry I missed the start of the meeting. It would be love to, for me to hear what they thought. Thanks. Absolutely. And we'll pick this up a little bit later. We'll have the evaluations to fill in, so don't all disappear. Uh, can I hear from David first? Who's our first guest? Good afternoon, all. Well, good good day. Let me just say that, since I don't know what everyone's time zone is. Uh, it's good to be back. I think this is my second time visiting the club. Enjoyed it quite a bit, and I look forward to uh, coming back. Thank you. Thank you. Our next guest that I'm seeing on my big screen is, I'm maybe mispronouncing this, Rui. Is that the correct way of saying your name? Hi, everyone. My name is Ray. All right. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that today I can attend this wonderful meeting. It's definitely uh, humble and an opening experience for me because all of the speakers a very high quality, fantastic. So that of course for me to learn a lot because English is my second language. So through attending a meeting, I think I still have a long, long way to go. Thank you very much for being here. Next guest is Andrea. Oh, good. Can you can you share with us what are your thoughts, Sandra, for this meeting? I really enjoy the quality and the level. I've been to the other meetings and uh, they were fine, but this one was great. I really enjoyed it to the point I would come back. I'm challenging myself to visit as many clubs as I can. And I'm even going to visit a French club and do one of, and try to do a speech in French as well. So I'm really pushing myself to get out there and get a really, very Toastmaster experience, really varied, as wide as I possibly could get. This was different. I like the level. I like the, the camaraderie. I like everything about this meeting. Ours is much more formal. We have a quote of the day, a joke of the day. We have themes as well. And of course, the word of the day. So it's, there's so many similarities, but yet there's so many things that are unique about each club that makes it, that adds to its character. And I'm really enjoying the experience that this COVID virus has allowed me to have in visiting so many clubs online. Love it. And Andrea, where are you from? I'm from Barbados. Barbados, wonderful. And I just see pop into the screen, <laughs> Nick Lucani, up from his hospital bed at home. Why don't you introduce yourself, Nick? Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Nick Lucani, and I am, uh, I'm really sad to say I'm immediate past president of this club because it was so much fun being president, I can tell you. What a ride it was. I'm so happy to be here. I've had a break. I've slept on a Monday night, obviously not tonight. And it's great to see all my friends here and all the wonderful guests. Thank you. Uh, great job by uh, Pamela and all the rest of you. Well done. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Did I miss any guests? Everybody else there. Now, you see in the top with the time tunnel, Marianne Grady, she's your contact person for membership. Of course, I'm back up and Lou Brown, but please contact her. And maybe when you come next meeting, 
you'll be in process for a member and can take a role. Well, I think you should call on Kim Leeming because she is a guest tonight, perhaps for the last time. She's given her prospective member speech next time. Okay. Kim, do you want to say a few words? I'm just so excited to become a part of this and I will be giving my prospective member speech next week. And Nick, it's great to see you again because I don't know what happened, but I'm so glad you're back. And just everybody, I love this group and want to be part of it. Thank you. Okay. Great to see you, Kim. Good luck next week. You're going to nail it. Thank you. Just to complete this so that we have a completed schedule before we even leave the room, looking for two more evaluators, a general evaluator, and a table topics. I signed up to be an evaluator. Okay. I need to refresh my screen here. All right. Do we have a third person, third evaluator? Did I hear anybody want that? Table topics, one of the foundational roles. It won't be as big a role because we have the prospective speakers and others for the induction. So if we do do a table topics, we'll be reduced. Does anyone want to pencil themselves in for that? If not, I encourage everybody to go to the website and see what's left. Unlike your regular clubs, people really use the website and things don't stay open for a very long time. So I recommend that everybody go there and look at it. And it is now 9.02 and I'm gonna turn off the recording at this point.